welcome to 52%. The show that explores everything and anything going on in Liverpool and beyond from the perspective of 52% of the population, women. I'm Jennifer Jewell. I'm Lisa Simmons. Now this week we're going to be talking about women in the arts. From Jacqueline Dupree to Tracy Emin, Beyonce to Catherine Jenkins, women have been making their mark in the arts over the years. Yes, indeed. And today we're going to meet some of the talented bunch. Here's what's coming up on today's show. <laughs> On today's show, we're joined by Freya Jarman from the Liverpool University School of Music and Cherie Grist in the studio today, who's a local artist. So, ladies, thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking about the arts on today's show, mm -hmm. and you two women are quite prominent figures in the arts in the city. So, tell us first a bit more about what you both do. Cherie, we'll start with you. Yeah, um, I'm an abstract expressionist painter. Um, I've got a studio on Duke Street in town. Um, and and you're fabulous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're marvellous. Yes, <laughs> um, I studied fashion style and photography at London College of Fashion oh, wow. and then stayed there for five years and then I just wanted to do my own thing and I couldn't afford a studio and to live in London. So got the train back home to Liverpool and just decided to be part of the Liverpool art scene. Is there a big difference between the London art scene and the art scene up in the north? I would say probably like Liverpool based artists have a lot more freedom because rents are cheaper and people can put on shows and stuff like I've like I held a couple of shows myself and there's no way I'd be able to do that down in London because all your money goes on your rent. Does it give you, so, give you more time to do, to do what you love up here? Yeah yeah well I can be a full-time artist here in Liverpool but I wouldn't be able to do that down in London. Mm, Was yeah, it difficult so. going from fashion photography though to drawing art yourself? I mean fashion photography it's such a change a massive change. Well like my work even with photography it was a lot more experimental so whatever I was feeling I photographed and that's the same as me painting so the reason why I painted or photographed or did anything was all the same reason just the outcome was different and I suppose with painting I, I feel it's a lot more raw like me experiences and me feelings can come out and I can like understand them a bit more because they're there and a bit more visual and expressive yeah. I suppose where with photography it was a bit flatter. Mm. Okay, brilliant. Now, Freya, you're joining us in the studio as well today. You work for Liverpool University in music, don't you? I do, yes. I'm a, a senior lecturer in the Department of Music there, and uh, I've been in the department about 10 years now. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I'm very much enjoying it. Now, do you, do you find, because we, we, we spoke about this last time as well, about in certain industries, women are quite outnumbered. Have you come across that in your industry, in, in the university industry and in, in the art industry? For certain, I mean, composition and conducting would be the, the most obvious um, areas of musical practice where I think women are underrepresented, um, not necessarily in absolute numerical terms, but certainly in the way that we talk about composition and we talk about conducting. Uh, they both kind of have uh, images of, of being quite male dominated, mm. uh, which in turn makes it harder to, to get into. But over the 10 years, though, has, has that changed? Have you seen a bit of a change in 10 years or not really? I've, I think I've seen. Uh, I've seen some change since I was an undergraduate. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I started my undergraduate degree in 1996. So in, in the last sort of, uh, 20 years, I've, I've certainly seen um, more discussion of the issue um, and uh, people becoming more articulate uh, about the reasons why, why those uh, particular career choices would, would have that image. I'm not sure it's necessarily uh, gone away. Um, it's certainly not moved on as, as fast as one might hope. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, for sure, I, I think people um, expect more and more that that women will want to mm. to achieve the same sorts of things and the same they, sort of careers. How would they get into this as a career, though? Because it's not something that you ever see advertised, but when um, schools or universities, yeah. when, when you go on the, the day release, you know, to see what, what the school or the university offers. So how do you bring in new, new students, new pupils? What's the question exactly? How, how do we bring in... How do you, how do you advertise this to girls to get them involved as a career? That's a very complicated one because the study of music generally at, from school level throughout, you know, I mean, you mentioned Mozart and Beethoven and all of the big names in music history are men. Mm -hmm. um, all of the, uh, the big names in conducting are men. There are one or two notable exceptions. But um, 
people get as far as university and, and can't name a female composer. And if they go mm. through the, the right sort of degree course, they may still not be able to mention uh, yeah. a female composer on the other side of it. Um, uh, all we can do is uh, uh, keep raising the profile of the conversation uh, so that more and more universities are, are having... Uh, having that conversation and hopefully then impacting on, for instance, A-level syllabuses and in turn then on GCSE syllabuses so that people are learning it as they're going along rather than mm. it suddenly becoming this thing that you do. So do you 18. think it needs to be brought into the curriculum at a younger age? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I know my daughter, she plays the violin and yeah. that's, she goes to a normal state school and that's something extra I have to pay for her to learn because mm. music now is not on the school curriculum mm. at all. So if, if I didn't pay for her to have that every term, she wouldn't have any idea about composition, instruments, even yeah. something as simple as a violin. Yeah. And I think that's where do we need to perhaps go back to the beginning and start them on the tram, on the, the mm. triangle the or triangle. the tambourine. <laughs> yeah, that's, I can play the tra <laughs> triangle very, very well. Very well. It's not um, a weighted instrument, it is. It, it is, is. Of, course it's, of course it's an education thing from, from when they're young, isn't it? Getting, getting them involved in things from a young age and just, I suppose, putting the feelers out there and seeing, yeah. seeing what kids are interested in because yeah. it's not a it's not a boy girl divide really is it it's not but it's interesting that your daughter plays violin mm. right that uh there, I don't there think was much choice to be honest <laughs> sure okay <laughs> but had there been a choice it would have been an interesting choice to make Why um, is that? because the the violin now is seen as quite a female instrument to, to play it's ah, seen right. as uh, a, a choice that girls would make and partly that's to do with um the fact it's so heavily associated with classical music which tends to have more of a um, a, a female image, I guess, yeah. than uh, than rock music. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but even within the classical music world, the the instrument choices are very gender divided. So yeah. boys will tend to want to take up percussion yeah. uh, or brass yeah. instruments, uh, double basses, uh, okay. but not so much violins yeah. or flutes or. Primates. Now, Shri, you don't you don't really find that in in your industry as as an artist, but only six women have won the Turner Prize. So yeah. possibly it is there, but you you've not re not really come across it, have you? Not, I think it's just a lot better for female artists right now. I mean, I, I'm glad, to be mm -hmm. honest, because I don't think I would have liked the pressure of what all the... Um, Gender the, rights. Yeah, what the, you know, all the 80s and 70s artists did for, for the likes of me now. So, um, but there was one time we did an exhibition in our, in our gallery and me and my other friends, we curated the show and all our work was up. And we were just sitting there and vigilating the show. And um, this young girl come in with her parents and she was looking at one of my patents. And I think my patents are quite feminine. They're really bright and, well, it's what's inside me on yeah. a canvas. Like, And um, she was standing there and she was like, oh, mum is in his work, lovely. And wow. I just started laughing. And um, the mum turned around and was like, oh, sorry. And she was <laughs> like, and then the little girl was like, I really like his work, what's his name? And even though it said Cherie Grist in the label next to it, she just thought it was a bloke. And I it's was such like, a presumptuous it's my work. She was saying about yeah. Banksy, yeah. weren't we? Like, who says Banksy's a man? We're, yeah. we're all making a presumption. No one, knows, we? no one knows who yeah. he, she is. Could it Thank be a woman? for Tracy Ammon. Could so it be a woman? the only female artist I know. <laughs> <laughs> and OK, yourself, thank course, you yeah. very much, ladies. So speaking of composers, our lovely reporter, mm -hmm. Gail, caught up with the Liverpool Mozart Orchestra at one of their rehearsals. I was um, born into a family of musicians, really. All my brothers and sisters are musicians. So um, we lived in um, quite an old-fashioned household with no television, no computers, before any of the days of things like that. And so it was always music, chamber music in the house. And um, my brothers and sisters could choose various instruments to play. And basically, there was a violin left in the box, so I played that. I think um, the demograph of an orchestra has just changed um, so much over the last sort of 20, 25 years, where it used to be a very much a male-dominated um, scene. I mean, in fact, um, even 30 years ago, the LSO had very few women in it. Um, but in this country, certainly now, um, it's, it's about equal. I mean, some, some orchestras even have more women than, than men in, which is not necessarily the way around. You want to have, you want to have a nice balance. Um, but yes, it's, there's no reason um, now, I'm pleased to say, for a woman not to, not to 
given um, given hard work and um, luck, uh, there's no reason not not to succeed. So I've big, seen a big change over um, my career. Um, I think Lynn Fletcher was the first woman leader to be appointed uh, to the Halle Orchestra. I think she was the first. She's the first I can think of. Um, and that was a good 20 years ago, 25 years ago. And, and that was uh, really quite big news when that happened. And now um, there are several, like, uh, two in Scotland, um, the leader of the English National Opera uh, is a woman. And, um, you know, we're getting everywhere. Being a woman in the playing profession, I would say you have an equal chance. Luck is luck and good playing is good playing. But given that, now I think, I'm happy to say in the last few years, I don't think, I think equality is important. Um, and I think it pretty much is. That's not to say um, in other countries that would be the same. So the leader's job is to work as a, as a um, enabler, really, to enable the conductor to pass on and communicate through the orchestra what he's trying to do. Well, actually, a, a woman conductor is a very rare thing still, sadly. But um, I think that will change as well. It's just going to take longer. And we did play recently with um, a wonderful French singer, actually, but she, she conducted us, um, Natalie Stutzman. Um, and it was, again, it was just electrifying. It was one of the best concerts I've done. And uh, I'm pleased to say she was a woman. Being the joint leader of the Liverpool Philharmonic is an absolute privilege. I'm surrounded by really good players and um, it's, it's fu just fun. It's very hard work, but uh, it's, uh, we have a lot of fun. Welcome back. Before the break, we joined Gael over at the rehearsal with Liverpool Mozart Orchestra. And what a fantastic meeting. Indeed, I loved watching gorgeous, that. Beautiful. We've got such a great um, reputation for music in Liverpool, especially in the contemporary world, but in the classical world, it's probably not, not as prominent. Is, is it a harder industry to get into for women? Whether it's a harder industry for women to get into is, is an interesting question. I mean, I think that, uh, that classical music um, overall has a reputation of, of uh, quite a feminine image. Mm. Um, I certainly tend to see more uh, female students on the classical music programme that we have uh, in the department down on the popular music programme. Um, uh, but, you know, all kinds of musical worlds require a really careful balance uh, of home life and professional life. And I think that, uh, that overall, that is, that is more difficult mm. uh, for women to, to juggle. There are much greater expectations on uh, women to undertake childcare and be at home. And um, that, yeah, no, I think you're that's the real right. problem. That's, that's such a big issue, isn't it? A work-life balance is mm -hmm. such a more important thing for a woman than it, is, than it is for a man, which is maybe not a great thing to say, but, it, but it's the truth, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think you can ever find a balance, can you? Mm. I think the, um, they say that a woman, like a woman art, as artist's career is over, even if they take a year out to be a mum. Really? It's insane, yeah. Mm. Would, 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 you, would it put you, I don't know, have you got children, Sheree? No, not no, yet. Would it, would it put you off in the future, maybe, thinking, I can't really take, take a year out of my work because there'll be people there ready to take over? I think it depends on what part of your career. Like, I wouldn't do it, like, right now, because I'm at the very beginning and things are going really well. So I wouldn't want to take all that time mm. away to raise a family because that's something I really look forward to doing. But I think once I'm a bit more established, then I'd probably paint and, you know, be a mum. Yeah. So do you kind of almost have to structure your career to fit in having children and then think, right, at this point, when I get to this age, I want to be at this point in my career, I'm going to take a year off, have kids and then come back to it. Is that kind of what you have to do? I think it's more personal. Mm -hmm. I think I would rather know that I was at a certain level yeah. to then relax and enjoy being a mum. And um, still paint whilst having a baby because if I didn't paint then I'd probably go insane and I'd want to be a nice mum and not a crazy <laughs> mum because I haven't been painting for a while. A stre not, not a stressful mum but yeah. um, in terms of speaking sad, about women. It's sad to be a crazy mum though, isn't <laughs> <laughs> you want, You're a crazy mum. Uh, speaking of women in the arts uh, anyway, um, but the, there's a big story recently that Bach's wife actually composed a lot of his music. Is, is it just a rumour gaining attention or is, is there some sort of truth that could be to it? I think we'll never necessarily know all of the, uh, the exact details over uh, what any one composer did or didn't do unless you've got concrete uh, evidence. Uh, I think it's perfectly plausible. Um, I mean, uh, Bach had uh, a particular job to do. He had a lot of music to churn out. Um, uh, he had a wife who was capable of, of doing it, so there's no reason to think that 
it definitely didn't happen. Yeah. Um, mm. uh, the, the question is what we then do with that piece of information. Yes. Uh, you know, does that, uh, does that mean Bach wasn't uh, as great a composer? Does it mean we have to start looking at the wife's Mr. compositions? Mr. Bach, maybe, yeah, exactly. With their dream duo of, of yeah, composers. Yeah, yeah, quite. Yeah, the, <laughs> but but the, would, the it change, would, affairs, would it change anything, it? though, to think a woman done it or a man done it? The issue mm. is, does it, does it matter if he done it or his wife done it? It's still great music, isn't it? Of course, in the end, I mean, the music is the music, yeah. right? And, the, the, you know, similar things happened around uh, Schumann uh, and Clara Schumann or, you know, uh, Felix Mendelssohn and Fanny Mendelssohn. And there are mm. always these stories of um, uh, women behind the scenes in, in men's lives. Yeah, um, and it might, it's, it's, it's behind true every great man. <laughs> Her favourite <laughs> saying. Yeah, behind every great man, there's always a powerful woman. We all know that. Well, there is. But speaking of, speaking of orchestras, looking back at that film, we noticed that not a lot of... Um, directors, musical directors, are women, and there's a, a, a composer who made a comment who said basically that the orchestra don't, don't really want to see a woman in front, and they, they like they take the commands from they the men. They don't respond well to women. They don't do respond they? as well. What, is that is that something that you think it's okay to say? I think well, this is the the Petrenko comment, yes, isn't it, Vasily the Petrenko, one. the, the um, our very own uh, Liverpool Philharmonic conductor, yeah. in fact. Um, uh, no, I don't think it's okay necessarily to say that. Um, because it has all sorts of implications that uh, that women can't necessarily do as, as good a job. Um, he, he made a, a very quick turnaround um, and said he was kind of misunderstood. Uh, but I think uh, it was really indicative of a, of a general um, feeling that, you know, to be in that position of creative power um, is something that women are not necessarily up to in the same okay. way. And if, if you look at the, the conductors of the world's major uh, symphony orchestras, the overwhelming majority of them are men. Yeah. Uh, and I, th I think women do find it um, quite intimidating, actually, to, yeah. to imagine uh, getting in there. Um, do yeah. you think, though, the irony of that is he, he's a conductor of the Liverpool Phil. You know, Liverpool is full of strong women. Yeah. So it's quite a stupid thing to say in this city, really. Bearing in mind, I'm sure he comes across strong women every single day. But are there not women you've, you've come across to you think, well, they, they could do that job? Mm. Oh, certainly, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've uh, I've, I've been uh, uh, directed by female conductors uh, myself. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Marin Olsop is the biggest name in, in conducting uh, female conducting uh, name that I can think of, and she was told as a as a kid, oh, that women don't do that, mm -hmm. um, uh, as as if it is just a, a a path that is magically closed yeah. to you because you're a woman. Um, which which is it's bizarre it's and it's, it's not fair almost is it for, to mm. be told that as a woman would, would you would you be happy if someone said well women women don't paint would you still want to paint i get the biggest canvas i could possibly find <laughs> and do the biggest painting <laughs> rebellious i love it <laughs> oh no i just oh, i couldn't even imagine it well that, that's that's a great thing though to think you know what i'm not going to listen to that but sadly a lot of women do don't mm. they and they just think mm. oh okay i'll close myself off yeah. to that option which yeah. which is it's it's I think it totally comes down wrong to, to do parenting, that. Parenting, doesn't it? It's up to us as parents to teach okay. our boys this. I think from yeah. from a young age to make sure that you know boys and girls in the playground you're all equal. Mm, absolutely. Okay, we're going to move on now to watch trends, and we love talking about this every week, My don't thing. we? <laughs> Lisa's favourite part of the show, watch trending. Okay, big story this week is mm. Dolce and Gabbana's comments about IVF babies being synthetic babies and good old oh. Elton didn't take too well to that comment did he? What a stupid thing to say I mean D&G are known worldwide adore their clothes but to say something like that when they're really good friends with Elton John who and David Furnish who have had IVF babies because they you know they're gay why would you go out and say that and then expect people to just brush it under the carpet it's appalling in this day and age where you know gay people have had to fight to have to be treated equally mm -hmm. and then for a gay couple to say that it just throws you back 10 years absolutely what? it does yeah what, what are your ladies views on on the whole situation are ivf babies synthetic babies as such i, th <laughs> I think well whether the definition of synthetic actually technically applies to that or not my point would be so what right uh, uh, do Dolce and Gabbana only produce uh, clothes that are made from non-synthetic materials? Um, you know, we're all wearing bits of, of plastic and other synthetic things. I'm wearing spectacles. That's enhancing my vision yeah. uh, beyond what uh, what nature. I'm wearing synthetic made. eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fine tradition. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, using synthetic things. So uh, actually. 
it, my question is not, you know, are they synthetic or not? But actually, what does it matter whether they are? Mm, that's, right? That's that would be my question. That's of love, aren't they? The love yes. that couple have, they're just not able to carry the child. So they're given, you know, to a test tube or a surrogate. They still want to be brought into this world for a loving couple, yeah. whether they're heterosexual, whether they're not heterosexual. It doesn't matter as long as the children are loved. But the point loved. is, I suppose, they're made a different way. But when, when they arrive in this world, they're as much of a human being as yeah. the next person. Would, yeah, you, would you agree with that? Yeah, completely. I just think they're crazy for saying something like that. and But they always say that any publicity is good publicity, so they might have just said <laughs> it. Now. Have you seen on the, on the, uh, the Twitter sphere, Elton John's doing the hashtag uh, boycott d and I mean, I know what you're saying about the publicity, but this... Would, would it make you want to boycott the brand, though, for, for a comment they've made? I can't afford made? the brand. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm boycotting it because I can't afford it. If Topshop were to come out and say, <laughs> oh, Topshop... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, do you know what it was? Would because it? I believe so strongly in things like that. I think it's horrific the way a well-known um, brand has gone out to just mm. ostracise part of the population. Yes, it, it would definitely make me want to boycott. Absolutely. What about you? I mean, Jen, you're um, not a mum yet. No. Is it say say the unthinkable happened and you couldn't conceive naturally? What would you do? Well, yeah, I'd, I'd obviously go down down yeah. the IVF route the way many many other millions of people in the world have gone yeah. down. I don't think there's anything wrong with it as such. No. If that if it turns out that was the case for me, I'd I'd ap absolutely kind of kind of do that. I know I know, Frey, Frey you you do have two children conceived by IVF, don't you? Yeah, not not IVF uh, technically, uh, but both donor children. Yes, uh, yeah, certainly. And does that does that hurt you to hear comments made like that? I think, yes, I, I do think it's, um, it's damaging, really. Mm. Um, it, it's a shame. Would you Taking discuss it with your children? Of course, yeah, absolutely, because it's, it's part of my responsibility as a, yeah. as a mother to, um, uh, to teach them critical thinking about the world, right? And, um, uh, you know, I feel it's a, a great uh, privilege to have two boys, yeah. in mm -hmm. fact, um, and I think, well, I, I can turn these uh, two boys into uh, two good men. Um, uh, but, you know, critical thinking is uh, rare enough mm. um, and in all walks of in, in any conversation that's my job as yes. their mom is to not shy away from complicated conversations yeah uh, but to you know teach them to make them aware exactly to make yeah. them aware of things and teach them how to to not necessarily believe everything they uh, they hear and, and just take everything with a pinch of salt. Because the key is to, it's not how they get ears, as I said before, it, it's what you do when you are a parent and surely it's yeah. its better to be a parent to IVF children, bring them up in the right way yeah. than to be, to be born to a man and a woman and they don't get on, they fight every day. Surely your children are getting a, a much better upbringing than that type of situation. Yeah, absolutely. What What is important is uh, how you raise them, mm. uh, not how you made them. Absolutely, really. yes. Uh, and they, they both know how they were made. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, they'll talk about it freely. That, that's great to hear. We, yeah. we, we also want to talk about the, the Indian rap. What are they called? The, yeah. the Bam Babes the of Bam India babes. have made a rap against, um, obviously, all the violence that goes on towards women in India. What an amazing way to speak out and to reach the, <laughs> the so whole pop now, population it? of the world, yeah. isn't it, really? You yeah. are watching this video now. Isn't it great for someone to take a, a bad situation and, art, with the art, creatively turn it into a positive? So yeah. wrong as well. Well, everyone should be able to express themselves and give their opinion and... It's nice that you know they've done it an artistic way, and people are listening. Yeah. So. Would you Would you like to express something you're feeling in a painting, maybe? To I do every single do. day when I paint. Yeah. Yes. I get everything that I'm feeling out onto my canvases, and the world can take what they want from it. Then. Perfect. Well, hopefully, them ladies are gonna what make it a bad hair day. I wouldn't <laughs> like to see those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Join us after the break when we'll have more women from the arts talk with our two lovely guests in the studio here on Fifty Two Percent. Welcome back to 52%. Now, this weekend is a threshold festival in the Baltic Triangle, which has been described as a life force for grassroots and emerging arts. And this year, the brilliant team behind Threshold are showcasing visual art, including work by some brilliant female artists, such as Laura Lomax, Robin Woolston, and of course, our very own Cherie Grist. <laughs> I've been doing artwork a lot, like I've always been around art because my mum is an artist and um, my dad was an artist, um, but I didn't really know my dad, so I was around my mum. Uh, she went to art college when I was about three or four, so I, and it was like a performance space and music and art in the place where she was, so I've 
I've, I've kind of literally been around art all my life. I've sort of was interested in everything when I was at school, so I was into art, into maths, into music, into all of it. So, um, and my auntie is a was doing graphics and design as well when I was growing up, so I was around that kind of thing. Um, so I literally just kind of like. I couldn't really decide what to do when I was leaving school and stuff, but I decided to go with with art. I sort of and thought, well, I can still do other things if I want to as well. I don't have to restrict myself too much. Threshold Festival is a multi-venue, um, multi-arts, grassroots festival, I think is the best way to kind of describe it, really. So we've got performance, we've got music, we've got visual arts, we've got talks, we've got discussions, we've got everything going on. Um, it started off under one roof and it's now become multi-venue, so we're in lots of different different buildings and we tend to sort of take over buildings if we can or ask people if we can borrow them for the weekend and a bit of before to get set up. It's going to be amazing, it always is. It's always really interesting to walk across different spaces and see all the different things that are going on and even as organisers you don't get to know everything that's happening because there's different people organising different areas so it's really quite a nice thing on the Saturday and Sunday to literally be able to go and watch some performance or go and see some bands that you didn't know were playing or, or find something new that you didn't even, that you've never heard of or know about. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing um, Newbie and Twist play as well. That's going to be fun. So, and so I'm trying to see if there'll be any like discussions or talks because um, there were some really interesting ones last year that I saw. And, like it was on a Sunday afternoon and everybody was really tired. It was really nice to just go and like watch something like that, and or um, which was quite sort of like there was some comedy and it was funny. I think in terms of how many women we've got in the show, we didn't choose the artwork based on gender we literally chose the artwork based on the quality of the work um i think it's important to have women in the arts and to have men in the arts and um so uh when we were selecting artwork for the show we we, we didn't necessarily consider like people's gender we literally chose the artwork based on the art itself um uh but it, we have got a lot of women in the show so which is a good thing i think I think it can be harder for female artists sometimes to get recognised, um, but I think we're, we're, I think the more we do it, the, the, the better it is. I think what I do is I kind of ignore, I don't, I try not to worry about how hard it could be to be a woman in the arts and I just try and just continually push forward with my own artwork and my own music and just, just, just do that really because um, I, I almost like, well, I'm not going to let anybody stop me because I want to do it. So <laughs> in that sense, I guess that's how I would look at it from my point of view. Sometimes as a photographer, it can be, it can, I can find it like a little bit, it can like, or something, going to events or something, you feel a little bit intimidated. But at the same time, I just try not to let that happen and just try to actually just do the, do what I need to do. Like you said, like if there are a lot of, men taking photographs on male photographers like and you're the one of the only women there it can you sort of like think and then you think no actually I, I know I can do what I need to do I know I can take photographs so I'm not gonna I'm just not even gonna let that go into my head and I'm just gonna get on with the thing that I want to do and focus on actually the creativity and the art itself and whatever it is that you're doing yeah go on okay so Threshold Festival this week, Cherie. You're obviously taking part, which we just saw in the video. Are you looking forward to it? I can't wait. It's going to be amazing. I think there's 38 of us in total, art like visual artists, over three different sites. So there's going to be a wide range of different things, even though there's one theme, but it's going to be amazing. Well, what's the theme wait. this year? Contrast and geometries. Okay. Yes. But working with a the theme, do you find it hard to work with a the theme or do you find it gives you a little bit more guidance? To be honest, my work was perfect for it, so I don't know, yeah. <laughs> Because um, I have a bit of expression and um, geometry in my work, so... Tell uh, us about the work you're showcasing at the festival. Where, where can we find it as well? We, we all want to go and see this festival, so if we want to come down, where, where can we find your work? Um, I'm going to have a, a diptych in Constellation, so that's a large 6x6 patent um, on two pieces. And then I've got three, and that's going to be in the LCB space, which is the um, Liverpool new brewery place but even yeah. it was an old rubber factory that's going to be like mainly art visual mm -hmm. art in there and then also in unit 51 we've got oh, artwork so in there the as well so we've got three of them yeah brilliant 
But so are you looking forward to seeing any other artists work as well? Are you, are you going to try and get down free and see, see any of the artists work this weekend? Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm, I'm, I've never really feel like I understand art, I'll be <laughs> honest. Uh, I feel like a complete art dunce. Um, <laughs> I, I can just about draw a map to instruct somebody to get from one side of the <laughs> campus to the other. But uh, yeah, absolutely. No, I, I enjoy it even if I don't understand it. So. And I suppose like music, art something where you take a lot of influence from, from everywhere and take, take influence from other artists as well, I suppose. Are you going to try and try and see anyone else's work this weekend while it's on? Yeah, to be honest, I'm going to go and see like a bit of the music and the talks and things because I've never been to Threshold before. Yeah. So I didn't realise there was talks and stuff as well going on. So I get quite inspired by music and things. So So what what exactly is going on there? Because I was I was under impression it was just just art. There's a lot more no, going no, on. It's it's I would say there's like mainly mostly music. Okay. But this year it's like a lot more art as well. So it's a mixture of visual art and it's gaining a lot of prominence at uh, Threshold, yeah. isn't it? It's doing really, really, and the fact that it's at the Baltic Triangle is yeah. fantastic. I mean, you mentioned constellations. What a brilliant space! Yeah, that's brilliant fantastic. space. He's done yeah. such a good job, and it's a big performance space in there as well. So I think when you first walk in, that's going to be visual arts, and then you go back, and then that's where the bands and everything are going to play. So. Is it nice to do it in your hometown? Such such a big festival like this. Completely, yeah. <laughs> totally, yeah. Scouts some proud. Exactly. Is it going to is going to be people from all over the country coming down to showcase? Yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's artists from all over. So fantastic. Okay. So obviously, ladies, being being two creatives, do you find you said you didn't understand art at all, which which strikes me as interesting <laughs> as such a creative person. Why do you think it is you don't understand that? I think it's a it's a very different language of communication, right? I think what what we deal with um, is communication in means that are not um, that are not linguistic, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes those are, are means that are not representational. Right. Um, uh, so a piece of music, for instance, um, uh, kind of signifies a whole thing. It can set up a whole mood. It can uh, put you in mind of a certain scene or whatever. But it's not uh, it's not figurative mm -hmm. like uh, uh, portraiture, for yeah. instance. Um, I have enough practice, mm. I guess, dealing with the language of music to to have a, a sense of of what any one piece of music is doing in relation to a, to other pieces of music. And I think I just don't have enough practice with art. I I just kind of I yeah I sort of don't hear what it's saying necessarily uh, it's a very kind How of would you explain it to someone who, who, who says that would you would you say there is a way to understand art yeah totally like well my paintings in particular i would want people to get a feeling mm. when they look at them that's like either me being really sad or really angry in a painting and then it's quite funny when someone else has looked at my painting and they've gone oh that's so peaceful right and i've gone oh, that's such <laughs> so a people take and different things it. from each yeah, painting yeah, that's so, interesting yeah. that must be good for you as an artist though yeah yeah it's fascinating listening to people stand in front of me work and think you know feeling different, different things yeah. especially if i've been in a completely different mood doing it so i'd just say stand there and look yeah. on whatever you take from it it's just all personal like well is, is there right and wrong in art because i suppose there isn't in music either is that maybe classical yeah. obviously there's a right way to play it but the right way is as somebody who's enjoying it to experience it there's there's a lot of ways and there's no right or wrong is there that's that's probably true and i think i would probably say the same thing to people who say oh i don't get classical music you know i yeah. don't get what it's trying to do um i think maybe the difference is that the music takes place over a period of time so i feel like i'm being told some kind of story mm -hmm. i see a, a a snapshot it's like just it's all there and I'm like, how do i spend time with this i, I think yeah. the experience of time is very different but um uh, no, I think that um, uh, you know art of all kinds sets up a, a, a number of possibilities, mm. and there are multiple ways to experience the same thing. Um, uh, there are probably some limits um, uh, in music, so the Jaws theme tune yeah. uh, is very hard to imagine to the Jaws theme tune. Uh, you know, a, a pretty blonde lady in a white nighty skipping <laughs> in slow motion and soft focus through da, a field of wheat grass. Right? <laughs> there, there, there are probably some limits. So it's interesting that people take peacefulness from from some of your more angry. Yeah, uh, yeah. or what you conceive of as, as quite angry. Mm. Is, is that what made you fall in love with art? Yeah, to express myself, really. Yeah. Instead of run, wandering around like a lunatic. Do you find, do you find it's where you, where you fully express yourself? Yeah. Why, why is that? Because it's me inside, coming out through my arm, through my paintbrush, onto my canvas. So it's just raw expression. Absolutely. And then when I want to be quiet, I'll do me small, like, Blind. Every day, do you think, right, today I want to draw a plant, but I'm angry, so I'm going to draw an angry plant. <laughs> Just to bring it back to basics, though. <laughs> no. no. She's like, no, 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 it's nothing like that. No, my, my work's abstract, so it's like, 
colours and marks all spread out all over me canvas, so <laughs> no oh. angry plants, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> so just quickly tell us again, tell us again where, where we can see your work. Um, in Constellations, LCB and there's Unit 51, but my work won't be there. And so. it runs from Thursday to Sunday of this week, doesn't yeah, it? So yeah. we'll try our best to get down Rest to Church Festival. Festival. I think you'll find us there this the, week. Absolutely. Okay, join us after break and we've got a fantastic performance from Lauren Davenport on 52%. Welcome back to 52%. Don't forget you can follow us on Twitter at BayTV underscore Liverpool hashtag 52. Now in the studio, we've got a fantastic performance for you now from a young lady called Lauren Davenport, who is a singer songwriter from the Wirral. She's played at some fantastic festivals, including the Limp Festival last year. And she's here now to perform a track by Johnny Cash for us. So take it away, Lauren. a burning thing makes fiery ring bound by our desire I fell into a ring of fire I fell into a ring of fire Fell into a burning ring of fire. It went down, down, down. The flames got higher, and it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire. I fell into a ring of fire. The sweet when hearts like ours meet I fell for you like a child oh by fire and wild oh by fire and wild To a burning ring of fire, it went down, down, down. The flames got higher, and it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire, I fell into a ring of fire. Fell into a it went down, down, down. The flames got higher, and it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire. I fell into a ring of fire. I fell into a ring. Wasn't she brilliant? Absolutely Lauren, brilliant, was fantastic. Beautiful. And she's joining us on the sofa now to get involved in the chat today. So, Lauren, brilliant performance. How did you get involved in music? Um, well, I've always been obsessed with music ever since I can remember. Um, I did piano lessons when I was really young, like six years old. But then I stopped doing music throughout school and did went down the science route, went to university um, to do a biomedical science degree, and wow. my flatmate convinced me that I should pick up the guitar because I watched a lot of YouTube videos and I just really wanted to learn the guitar so I thought right I'll do it and my flatmates were very kind to me and didn't you know hate me too much for playing the same thing over and over <laughs> again. But and that's then, a big decision yeah. to, to leave your degree to go. Oh no I didn't something. leave my degree I got uh -huh. I, I just did it through through uni and then wow. left uni after getting yeah. the degree and then um 
about a year and a half ago, decided to sort of branch out into the live music scene of Liverpool. Started going to like open mics and stuff. It's fantastic, it's isn't it? The, the live really. music scene in yeah. Liverpool it's is so good. City. I mean, it was really mm. nervous, yeah. nerve wracking at first getting into it because everyone sort of knows each other. Um, everyone supports each other, but it's it's nerve wracking when you've never done it before to sort mm -hmm. of get into that. But then once you're in, like everyone's so lovely. Don't you think that's a great thing about Liverpool, though? It's such a community yeah. thing, no matter what, what area they are, you're laid it all in different areas, but do you, do you all find that it's such a community thing? Yeah, definitely. Everyone will have a mate or a boyfriend or a girlfriend who does a, a, a different kind of art, so everyone will all kind of know each other. And do you find it more supportive? Do you find people support each other up here? Yeah, for sure. I've lived uh, across the country, really, from the southwest to East Anglia to Newcastle, and I've been here 10 years. It's the friendliest place I've ever lived. And does that make a difference as a creative person to have a bit yeah, of Yeah, absolutely, because it's too easy to get competitive, mm. right? And I, I think that that kind of competitive nature is uh, actually not very helpful in the long run. Um, no, you're so it's, right, it's, actually. It's I don't habit. understand competition in, in music, because music's not about being better than someone else's. It's about being who you, you are. Do your ladies all yeah. find that? It's really hard when you see someone playing a song that you play yourself and you think, you play that so much better than I do. And then you start doubting yourself and you yes. start comparing yourself to everyone else. And it's so difficult to sort of keep the mindset of, no, I'll just, I just need to do me sort of thing. Absolutely, which, which is the most important thing. I'm sure you find that as well, don't you, as an artist? Yeah, definitely. I'll look at, like, I always like keep an eye on what artists around my age group and or where I'm at in my career are doing. And if they're doing better, I'll think, right, well, I've got to up my game more. I don't just think they're better than me, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to, you know, it, it's good to have, that. It's good to have good. healthy competition, but not sure, to get yeah. too wrapped up in it, I suppose. Would, would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the kind of um, I've got to be top dog, alpha male mm. sort of habit is, I mean, it's, a, it's an alpha male habit, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it's right, you know, the clues in the question, absolutely. Uh, really, and that kind of collaborative thing. Oh, sorry, sorry, Freya. No, I was just saying, the, the collaborative thing of sharing and uh, supporting each other yes. is uh, actually more useful. It is, absolutely. But, go on, what do you want to ask, Laura? Whose music do you listen to? Um, I listen to a lot of country music. Um, I didn't really grow up listening to country, but then I sort of, the Taylor Swift sort of yeah, generation yeah. sort of pushed me towards country, and now I listen to sort of like the Casey Musgraves and like Lady Antebellum and I love like Lady and, and Yeah, and the that. country music is getting so much bigger now in the UK. Like, we've got the Shires who just got in the top ten um, okay. of the actual charts, not just the country charts. And there's a country music festival they do every year in London, and it's just getting so much bigger. And it's it's so good to watch like the music I love sort yes. of becoming more popular here instead it's, it's of just over America. It's an interesting choice of music, yeah. But for so, for a girl that's so young, it is an interesting choice of music. You're that you like. I mean, I country. remember when I was young watching um, the programme about John Denver and his life. And ever since then, I was like, I didn't really realise at the time because I was young, I didn't, didn't really think, oh, this is country music. But I remember just, that was the very first time I can remember being so inspired and wanting to pursue it. Well, obviously you've got a degree. You're not currently using that, you're doing your music. Yeah. How, how do your well, parents I've, feel about that? I'm doing a master's as well, so I sort of... Super busy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard work, but... You, I think you have to, um, it's, music is so competitive, well, as all the arts are, um, it's, you've got to have your hands in mm -hmm. something else as well because you can't just rely on it. Um, no, I think no, that's what a lot right, of yeah. younger people don't realise how difficult it is and so... Is it something that maybe you should do, not as a hobby because you take it very seriously, but... Yeah, well, it started of off else? as just a hobby yeah. and then I got a bit better at it and then I sort of opportunities came about and I sort of thought well maybe mm -hmm. there's a possibility I mean I'm bringing out an EP in like a month so um, tell, us, tell us more about that then go on um I played a festival in July last year and it was just someone found me on Facebook you know networking Facebook's a great thing yeah. and um the guy that found me happened to be friends with this CEO of a company called Southern Crossroads Music and he liked my music and then he said do you want to make an EP and I said yes yeah <laughs> so I've yeah, not heard the word EP for a long time have you not no not EP's for a long common. time I've just don't hear that anymore it all seems to be down I know what an EP is okay good they've been around for years but you yeah. never hear that anymore it's all about I've made a download made a yeah. download and this this is on iTunes so, so how, many yeah. tracks, how many tracks have you got on it I'm hoping for I wow. recorded four yeah um 
Locally, you recorded locally. No, I actually recorded it in Bedford because that's where the comp that's where they're all based yeah. and all the musicians that are working on it there. And you're going to be doing based. the live the live circuit in Liverpool to promote that? Yeah, I mean I've been playing the same songs for the past year, so <laughs> me personally, I'm like sick of sick the of songs them. now, <laughs> even though like the my. What songs, are you doing in that situation? Because if you're playing the same songs night after night after night, how do you make it interesting for you? Um, you just you like throw random words in. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> Um, not really, it just helps when you get positive feedback, like yeah. someone saying it, or they, they really like that song or things like that. It just and it's the adrenaline, helps, I suppose, when you perform, yeah. isn't it? It helps to sort of keep the positive mentality going. So who, what role model, who do you, when well, you're on stage, who do you channel? Do you ta channel Taylor Swift or Madonna um, or Beyonce? I, I, like, I like to think I could be a cross between Taylor Swift and Casey Musgraves, but... Um, not really. I just try and do me most of the time. It's good for you. It's important to. It's important to. I can't. Models. I yeah. can't compare myself to the likes of them because they are so good at what they do. Like, the songwriting is just. Brilliant. Well, I think it's just yeah. out of this world. So, I just try and they get take. Mm, you never know. I, you never know. They're, they're they're pretty talented, aren't they? <laughs> it's, it's a creative thing, and obviously it's, you yeah. ladies and the lot, creative. Yeah. So, do you, do you all have your own role models that you've grown up looking up to and? wanting to aspire to, not to be, but to be like, and to, to follow in their footsteps. Um, Freya, did you, did you have someone who you thought, they're great, they're, they've inspired me to follow the music direction? Oh, cripes. In terms of uh, uh, musical interests, uh, I would have to say my dad is my hero, actually. Okay. Yeah, no, very much. It, and uh, uh, my teenage rebellion was listening to the Carpenters. Um, so, uh, you know, I have uh, no desire to be like uh, Karen Carpenter. As you can see, I'm not aspiring to the, to the body <laughs> shape there. Um, uh, but no, I mean, I, th I think there are uh, lots of um, really strong people uh, uh, throughout music, uh, men and women. Uh, yes. You know, I've, um, and, you know, these, these days I aspire to good teaching more than anything else. Mm. And I think actually that's a, a real performance in itself. So I, yeah. I've sort of taken my musical instincts and, and put it into teaching. So. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for today's show. Thank you to Cherie Greist. Good luck this weekend at the festival. Thank you so much to Lauren as well. And thank you, of course, to Freya. So it's been a great show. I feel very cultured now, <laughs> today, don't you? <laughs> I do. And next time we're going to be talking about women in sport. So see you next time on 52%.